Mario, as you can tell, the lights are dim. The time is right. We should light a candle because it's time <laughs> for sexy trade talk time. <laughs> are you trying to seduce me, Mrs. Robinson? <laughs> Hello fellow Bills fans, Sean Rogers Realtor and lead of the Mr. Rogers Homes team. Did you know that real estate is one of the best ways to build wealth and right now is one of the best times to own an investment property in Arizona? Please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions so we can take the next step to your financial freedom here in the Valley of the Sun utilizing real estate. As always, God bless America and go Buffalo! I think the more concerning fact for the people watching right now is why aren't we in a vehicle driving at ridiculous, ludicrous speeds? Ludicrous speed. <laughs> ludicrous speed. Go. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, life comes at you fast. Uh, well, that's why we're. How many 80s movies can we quote in the first freaking 10 minutes? <laughs> So, Mar, I want to talk about you because know, even though the Bills, you know, the Bills at this point, two losses on the season. He lost to Pittsburgh, lost to Tennessee. Uh, yes. Hurts, right? Both AFC teams, both possible playoff teams, right? So, the lessons that you learned from that game because you got a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a, the the tide is calming, right? Your next three out of the four games are are not as daunting. Trade yes. deadlines come up in November second. So when you start looking at what is out there, uh, Buffalo is in the trade market. Don't think that they're not, right? If you can improve oh. your football team, you're going to improve your football team. Oh, yeah. Bean's always a mover and a shaker. He's always looking for the next guy to bring in to his right. uh, program, um, obviously, to see if they can compete. Because that's when you see the best um, the best production out of the Buffalo Bills is when they have that cutthroat for every position. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what happens. But, right. uh, you know, Paul, it's, it's weird because we have – I mean, Paul and I will disagree on many – many uh, discussions you know in the trade deadline i don't know if the bills will be very huge players at the trade deadline both because of their cap situation and for simple fact is you you built this team up into the point where it is right now that i mean we're going to examine some players and some positions that probably could be helped right now mm -hmm. but you don't you want to have something sustainable without without being like the philadelphia eagles yeah. Like that one and done Super Bowl and then they mm -hmm. fell into, you know, just chaos. So Yeah. Well, I think it's it's a fine balance, right? So you're gonna acquire players that you don't necessarily even need to start for you. Right. So when I talk about mm -hmm. Bills being players at the trade deadline, I'm not talking about going out and getting starters. I'm talking about going out and reinforcing positions that you know you're one injury away from being in some real big trouble. Um so I've got three uh three players, one at each position. Mark, you're going to defend the roster as it stands, aren't you? I am defending the roster, the current players, because of the continuity that's going on with the Buffalo Bills right now, and I don't think there's any reason to hit like hit a huge panic button right now at the trade that line, even though it is coming around the corner. It is November 2nd, so yeah. there could be I, – I think that there's probably going to be more players leaving the Bills than will be added to the Bills, but that's okay. a discussion for a little bit later in the show. Okay. It's, all right. Well, let's uh, – <laughs> Then let's get to it. Um, why don't we start with a name that I think was floating around a lot during the offseason. Um, I look at one of the positions the Bills need, corner. Like, I just, the more and more we see this, the more and more I think we're just one injury away from really being in trouble. I understand Sierra Neal is technically a corner, but I think we're all happier with him when he just gets to go smash, right? Like, <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're all just happier there. Um, so, to me, if I'm looking at the the cornerback market, and there's not much of one. Um, Steven no. Nelson, um, he plays for Philly right now, signed a one. Speaking of Philly. <laughs> Speaking of Philly, exactly. Well, that's what I mean. Philly's got to look at pulling the, pulling the, you know, pulling the rip cord here. You know, they're sitting at second last in their division. They've scored the ninth most points in their division, which is just not, it's just not going to win you football games. Um, and they're in the basement of their own division and they've only got two wins. And guess what? Washington has two wins, and they're in second. Like, if Philly loses this weekend, you pull the ripcord, right? You start shopping mm -hmm. deals. You start trying to make your next year better. Um, because I don't think they're sold on Jalen Hurts at quarterback. I definitely don't think they have a plan at wide receiver. They need assets, right? Steven yeah. Nelson on a one-year deal, a um, little bit of a lighter guy, right? But, yeah. Mark, correct me if I'm wrong here, isn't that what Buffalo 
seems to prefer in that second cornerback spot. Somebody a little lighter, somebody like haven't we that seen can, that show? can run with the speed guys. Like you need a guy that can run with the speed guys, but more often than not, the Bills are playing in a very they're playing in a zone coverage scheme. So you don't need a guy like Revis over there or just a man shut down corner. Right. Which is probably one of the reasons you haven't seen Dane Jackson too much on the roster because he is a heck of a man corner. Mm-hmm. He's not he's, he still has to learn the fundamentals and, and the breakdowns of the, being a zone corner. And I think Levi just has the experience over him as far as the current roster goes. But bringing in a guy like Nelson, uh, who has played nearly 100% of the snaps, like you said, he's, he's about 5'10", about, about just a little shade under 200 pounds. Um, different kind of system. You know, very different kind of system. So uh, are you doing a lot of this? Are you saying a lot of this because the next three opponents for the Buffalo Bills are Miami, the Jets, and the Jags? So anyone who comes into this roster – can have their own little preseason for the next three oh, no, games. Man. It's it's a nice time for the trade deadline. I'm just saying it's like it's perfectly it nice. placed, right? It is if nice. You go, know, they have some Yeah, if you're gonna go get somebody, what better gift can you give them than here are two games where you can play some snaps and, yeah. and you do not need to worry about making mistakes. Now just for you know the new viewers that come over to hashtag they start to see our stuff for the first time. A lot of the stuff that Paul and I root a lot of our thought process on is, you know, connections in the league and, you know, being able to fit with the, with the squad that's currently there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nelson could fit. I'm not going to say he can't fit. He could fit with the Buffalo Bills. That's one point. The second point is, obviously, McDermott has familiarity with the Eagles organization, so it would be easy to make that phone call. Mm-hmm. The third thing is the Eagles have already been players already in the trade market sending Ertz to the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. So you know that they're willing, or they even, they're aware of the points that Paul brought up earlier in the show and the fact that you lose one more game, you're going to be shopping for a quarterback next year in the top five. Mm-hmm. So that being said, I don't know if they will. That's a discussion for another day. That's a discussion for a Philly show. This is the Buffalo Bills show here. <laughs> but the point is, uh, I could see where you're coming at trying to do that. And in, 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 in keep in mind, too, the Bills, because of their cap situation and because of a lot of things that they have going on, you're not bringing in a huge name guy. No. You're not going to bring in a huge guy that's an all pro. You're bringing in a guy basically for depth reasons because you do have a lot of depth on this team currently. Mm-hmm. Paul had mentioned Siren Neal. I like to see what Dane Jackson has more of in the tank. But I believe Nelson's on the last year of his deal too, isn't he? Yep. He signed a one okay. year. Yeah, it was okay, and that, that was the second part that I was getting to about when these guys get shopped. You know, and how much they get shopped for is contingent upon how many years they have left on their deal. If they're a one-year rental, you're not going to get any more than like a fifth or a sixth for these guys. Yeah, exactly. Or if it's a player for player, if you're swapping in, if I don't know, I'm just saying it. If if Philly needs defensive line help in that division, where you got Antonio Gibson, Ezekiel Elliott, and Saquon Barkley, you have to start stop the run there. You're going to have to stop the run in that division. You might try to get some interior defensive linemen. Mm-hmm. So, right. Right. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, knock the idea, but I think with Levi Wallace currently, he's on, he's on his last year of his deal. He's going to be playing out of his mind coming up soon. I think you have Dane Jackson and Siren Neal. I think you have enough depth at the, at the cornerback position and in the scheme that you play that you could get a corner, but I don't think it's a, a very high probability that they do get one, Paul. All right. now, sell me on your take of why they go out and get a corner. Well, I think, you know, I understand that Buffalo carries two corners on their practice squad for a reason, right? To me, yes. I don't think there's a bigger sign that, okay, we think we might have some problems here than carrying multiple positional players on your practice squad. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it's just, it, it's just a sign to me like, okay, we, we know we need some reinforcement here. And like Buffalo did this last year. Remember right before the playoffs, they used their veteran practice squad spots for Devonta Freeman and Kenny Stills and Deron Lee. Like they were not shy going to get veteran players. The difference mm-hmm. was they were able to acquire those guys off the free agent market, right? Yes. You don't have that ability right now. So no. why not get some reinforcement now? Because those those players never made an impact for you. Maybe that was the lesson. You got them late, but it was too late, right? They were yeah. there. She needed it, but you didn't need it. Like you brought up Duke Williams instead when instead of activating Kenny Stills. Like, you know, you yeah. Maybe maybe the lesson there is let's let's be players at the trade deadline for things that we don't necessarily need right now, um, and then if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's not going to hurt you to keep them inactive. Now, is this is this more your take on because Bean loves the insurance policy? Yeah. 
Or do you think? Okay. All right. Yeah. Because that's a, well. All right, Paul. I'll ask you the million dollar question or multiple million dollar questions. What are you giving up for this guy? I think you're I think you're foolish to give up anything more than a fifth round pick. And, you know, fifth, okay. fifth round picks for Buffalo have been starters. Tommy talked about it with uh, Mike uh, on yeah. Tilly talk on Friday. Um, you know, it's the you look at Bean's draft history. A fifth round player could be a starter for you. So a fifth round is is a lot of asset to give up. I think sixth round probably makes a bit more sense. But yeah. Stephen Nelson's been around long enough. He he might he probably garners a fifth uh, a sixth conditional to a fifth. Yeah, if he plays a certain amount of snaps throughout exactly. the rest of the yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Right. Or if he re-signs, you know, right. if he if he re-signs with the Bills, that might be for three years, let's say, and right. then you 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 part ways with Levi Wallace, mm-hmm. then that could be you know a sixth to a fourth. Sure. So you end up getting you end up getting a corner exactly. for four years. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's what I mean. Yeah, it's I think I think with the rental deals, you're probably just looking at snap counts or games started or you know percentages. Yeah. You know, you're just you're looking at that. You know how they judge the Pro Bowl. You know. <laughs> Don't get me started on the Pro Bowl. That was a very <laughs> expensive mistake. Um, all right, I want to move on to uh, num- position number two. Uh, this one, you're, I don't think you're going to agree with me here. Okay. But the interior offensive line of the Buffalo Bills is pretty rough, right? It, it, it is, yes. It's pretty rough. You have Daryl Williams playing at probably a league average level. Um, but again, you're making that investment because Spencer Brown is next to him. You are you cannot give Spencer Brown a better gift than having the starting right tackle on this team play next to you. Right? Exactly. Yep. <laughs> you can't give a better gift than that. Uh, Feliciano has not been great. Uh, Ike Bucker, re, he... I, played one game. Played one I, game. Think, I think Ike Bucker, again, is, is at best a league average guard, right? Okay. You do have Ryan Bates, who's been hanging around for a very long time, but you clearly don't want to commit any playing time to him. Um, so I do think you got to look at trying to make your line a little bit more versatile. And I am going to say that comes from the Giants. And I think that is Billy Price. Billy Price played center and guard for the Giants. It is not Ooh, well. Is he a they former first been... rounder? Do you... Okay, so now you see where I'm going with this, right? Mario, tell me the history of being loving first round picks. Doesn't matter where they come from, right? Um, can confirm he loves first round picks. Doesn't right? Exactly. It doesn't matter where they. We come thought from. the Bills were going to get Billy Price the one year that year sure that he was drafted. Yeah, yeah, sure did. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it, Bean loves players who are former first round picks. So yes. the Giants aren't going anywhere in that division. You know, you know they're going to be sellers at some point. They, I mean, they can't even get a healthy wide receiver on their roster right now. So. I think at some point you become you become a seller. I don't think Billy Price has played well enough to get a contract extension. He's going to be a free agent next year. Um, I think it's you just look at going right. You just you just look at it and you move. Right now, PFF has Billy Price graded out as uh, a 55 in run blocking and a 40 in pass blocking. And let me be honest with you, uh, I think the 40 in pass blocking is a product of the quarterback play um, with the Giants. Uh, that, that's just a bad offense. It's a bad offense. I think any move for him is a good move. Um, and um, getting a Buffalo former first round player, that's a Bean move. It's an easy call. It's an easy call because Bean and Gettleman, Gettleman. have history. Yeah, so, got, you're with, so, you're with, so you're putting the pieces of the puzzle together, Mark. I always got to right. put them together. But, yeah, them together. Get, but I, you know, yeah, I like. Gettleman's in New York. They work together in Carolina. Now, we haven't seen that connection come together. Not That's yet, right. no. The only no. time it was when I think. When the Bills cut Calvin Benjamin, mm-hmm. I think the yep. Giants tried him out yep. or something like that to that effect. Well, he was um, with the Giants. He was with the Giants this year. And just to show you how much, uh, how big of a take Paul, Paul, how much stock Paul puts into familiarity and connections around the league, Billy Price has played Ohio State. All right, Paul, would you like to enlighten the guests on how much you love Ohio State players around the whole league? I, I despise Ohio State quarterbacks. I despise Ohio State corners. Anybody from the secondary Ohio State, get them off my team. Don't want them. Don't. Okay, want so them. so here's my question to you: Is are you are you bringing Billy Price in? Okay, obviously all these guys you're bringing in, we're gonna we're gonna put it on the table right now. Their insurance policies for currently what you have. Okay, is Billy Price your insurance policy for uh, Morse or yeah. is Mongo your insurance no. policy for? So Morse? I I. I think that's sort of the fun million dollar question, right? Yes. Mongo yeah. at center was at best a league average center, right? Yes. 
Yeah. Is Billy but, Price is Billy Price a league average center? Probably. Could, Probably. Well, I mean, you talk about his grades at PFF, and I, I, I get it. You know, I, I understand it. the PFF grades. I understand that. You got Bates on the team who can play all five positions, so that's his role. That's the role that he's accepted. He has a job. He gets mm-hmm. up. He plays every week. Right. You know, he suits up. That's 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 Bates for you. You got Morrison Mongo who can play center for you. Morris is one concussion away. I mean, you're 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 suggesting these, and as we talked about at the onset, you're suggesting a lot of these moves because one injury, you're gonna have to hit the panic button. You'd rather not have the panic button hit, you'd rather have that guy in house learning. Right. And I understand that. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of the things that you do speak some truth in the fact that a lot of the stuff could be attributed to the quarterback play and the horrid offensive line play right. for the Giants mm-hmm. in the NFC least. I mean, that division is just atrocious. Mm-hmm. It's really, and I think it's interestingly enough, teams are very open to discussions with teams from the other conference. Like you don't want to play against these guys. You end up giving up and like right. you pull the cord on them too much or right. too early. So I understand where you're coming from as that goes, but I don't know where he fits. Like I don't, you have had Butker in the building for four years. Mm-hmm. He's been playing with you. He played, he started the last seven games for you last year. He is a monster among men. Mm-hmm. He, come, he came in when Mongo got hurt that one week when yep. he, they played Houston. True, it was Houston. I understand that. So he played 100% of the snaps for you there. He's a guy. He's He is your insurance policy as, as of right now. Sure. So going to get Price, who um, you said he's not going to get re-signed. He was originally drafted by Cincinnati, and now he's on his second team. That works in the Buffalo Bills' favor for maybe a possible re-signing mm-hmm. because a guy that's going to his third team – in five years it's a big deal yeah you know it's a big deal when you go to the negotiating tables you know i'm sure bean would be able to pull off one of his two-year deal two-year prove it deals and 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 whatnot but paul talking specifically about the offensive line is this going back to your preseason analysis when you're like this is the line you're going to get when you pay josh allen his money yeah this is is what you're getting yep and that's what I think Billy Price does. Now, Billy Price, you know, his rookie season graded out very well. But the last two seasons in Cincinnati would be 2018, 2019. It was yeah. bad. Yeah. It was bad. But so is that team. You know, like his pass blocking grades were atrocious. Which Did he get Burrow hurt? Anymore. Because he was there when Burrow got hurt. Now sure. he's in, in New York when Daniel Jones got hurt. I don't sure. like to see the trifecta. Of going, what's going oh, on here, Paul? Come on, <laughs> Listen, I'm just looking at assets, man. You know, does exactly. Make team, yeah. Make your team better. I mean, I think he makes your team. He brings more pedigree to your team than you have right now. Like you yeah. look across what you have and you have Ryan Bates, who is, I think, I don't even remember if Bates was drafted. You got Cody Ford right now, who I, I don't think they would put in the lineup if their life depended on it. No. You know, so no. at some point you look at the assets that you have and say pedigree matters. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Pedigree I mean, matters. I, I think it does. Uh, he's he's currently started five games. He's twenty seven, so he's still yep. a young asset that you can you can yeah. play around with. Butker's also twenty seven, so mm-hmm. you, they have the parallels there. Both understood um, free agents coming up. How much stock? We know how much Bean puts in it, but how much stock do you put in former first rounders? Because a lot of those guys have been busts. It matters. It's Mar. I think you. I think you can agree with me here. High level athletes. This team bets on high level athletes. Well, let me. I think let me Buffalo, it's different. It, that's what I was. That's what I was trying to get to is the fact that with Nelson and now with Price, they're not the normal, typical freak athletes that you just got to coach up. Mm-hmm. Right. So, do you think that they have that division, that line in the sand for their players? Like, okay, these guys are freak athletes in the first and second rounds, and then these guys over here are the guys that we're going to have to try to develop in our program. Mm-hmm. It, Price seems like he's on that line. Mm-hmm. He's a six-four center. Who, who, you know, the dude could play. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, well, I, I'm I'm going to be on that fence, but I'm going to stay steadfast against you, Paul. I don't know. I don't know if price, if that's a guy, you may have to pay the price when he comes in. So I don't oh, know how much money oh, the bills will have. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. I, Rabbit out of a hat, ladies and gentlemen. Rabbit out of a hat. I just that offensive line is just troubling to me. And again, if you, if Mongo gets hurt, um, you 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 can absorb that loss. I think Dare Williams gets hurt. That's a that's a big one. Right. Yeah. Big yeah. Or you, or you, or you, you flip Mongo back over to the right side and you put Butker at, Butker. Le- at left yeah. where he was. And either, so. and either way, Cody Ford's not in the equation. True. Very yeah. true. Another guy that could be. Let's going talk somewhere about else. Cody Ford. 
Let's talk about Cody Ford real quick. All right, before we get to the third position, let's talk about Ford. I think Ford, somebody's going to see an asset in Ford. He's uh, He's got one more le- year left on his deal. Mm-hmm. Um, the Bills won't be asking a lot for him. You'll probably be getting Daryl Johnson type. What? Pick me. Pick me. Oh, yeah. Uh, you'll probably be getting Daryl Johnson type um, return, sixth rounder maybe, if, mm-hmm. if, if that. Um, but, you know, we've seen – you know, the Bills did this with Wyatt Teller. So they ended up packaging Teller, which ended up being some of the resources that they went to get digs, right. which everyone always misses when they start talking about, oh, we had Wyatt Teller. They run it. They have Chubb and Hunt there, and they're running the ball all the time. They're, like they're, He's a run-blocking guard. That's what he is. Yards. He ran for 147 yards to Ernest Johnson. Yes, that's what, that's what he there. does. Yeah. But then you look, your quarterback's injured. <laughs> So right. how is he in pass blocking, guys? Right. So, right. Um, well, yeah. So, so yeah. I, I think Ford garners an asset from for somebody. Right. Over second round pick. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the pivot here, right? I think in this deal, right? We talked about uh, Stephen Nelson. I think you probably have a sixth to a conditional fifth. Uh, Billy Price. I think the Giants would just be happy to get anything, any return at that point. Um, I think Kama Kruger Hill, the linebacker from Houston. Uh, you trade. Cody Ford to Houston. I think they're pretty happy with that because who's in Houston? Ooh. Who's in Houston? Uh, David Cully. David Cully's in Houston. That's right. Connection once again. Here we go. Right. And that offensive line is piss poor. Piss poor. I think yes. they will be happy to take a reclamation project on a linebacker <laughs> that, you know, the truth of the matter is Houston is is an awful football team right now. Uh, Comer Kruger Hills in the last year of his deal. He's grading out about a 63 in coverage for a linebacker that's actually pretty good. So he gives you yeah. a nice coverage linebacker. And well, again, he's on the field enough. <laughs> you're not looking. You're not looking at him to start. You don't need him to start. No. You, just, no. you need him in there to go and and play when he absolutely has to. Milano came back from injury and played 100 percent of his snaps because you couldn't afford to give up. Uh, you know the, what he brings. Conor Kruger Hill's pretty quick. You know so. Like there's a big difference between the speed of Matt Milano and the speed of AJ Klein. There's a big drop off there, um, yes. so I think you got to cover that a little bit in comic. Well, you get, you got up. you got Dodson number one. You got Dodson there. Yeah, I mean, he, he just can... never plays though, Mar. How many snaps has he played so far? He long? hasn't needed to. He's your insurance policy. So you want an insurance policy for the insurance policy? They've been beating the piss out of half the teams they've played. What do you mean? But Paul, come on. Let's think about this for a second. We've went down this road. I've had this discussion with you already. Yeah. About a linebacker from Houston that the Bills got who was a tackling machine all over the field. The Bills cut him and he was done. Mm -hmm. So you want the neutral suite version of that linebacker now to come in and trade that line. Bring me. Do you have a hyphen in your name? Come to Buffalo. (laughs) What is with you and the hyphen? I just think it's funny because it looks stupid on Jersey. (laughs) I can't wait to buy you a jersey and put a hyphenated name on it just for a minute. <laughs> uh, yeah, I understand. I understand that, I, but I mean, there is a huge drop off. If you're tr- to go back to your point, there's a huge drop off between Milano and, and Klein. Yeah. Klein is going to have one more year on his deal, so your insurance policy is going to be up there. I understand that. Dodson, I think he has one more year left. If he doesn't, he's just on a one year. Uh, you still got Andre Smith waiting in the wings if you wanted to go that route. But I don't know. Andre Smith pissed me the hell off. After getting that touchdown call back on that kickoff. Oh, my God. That, right that's that's not. We can't go into the holding calls because Henry had like eight on his. So, <laughs> um, no, but I understand. But the, the crux of this argument and, and the topic that we've, we started with tonight or today is the fact of this, Paul. You go, you go down one corner, you're going to be in trouble. You go down one guard, you're in a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. You go down one linebacker, and the reason is this. You – effectively may have to change your defensive and or offensive philosophy if you lose a guy at those positions. Mm -hmm. Think about this. You bring in Klein from Milano, you're not covering tight ends with with Klein. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if the other team sees that, they're going to expose that the the entire game. Right. And then you're going to have to try to cover for that. You know, Paul – you you've not you've been an athlete. Do you ever get you ever hurt like one of your legs? And you try to overcompensate by putting more weight on the other one oh, so I'm you so, don't hurt yeah. more, and then yeah. you end up hurting that leg. Yeah, so two injuries are the death. Or that's it, week fourteen killer. Our soft tissue. Oh injury. yeah. Well, what I'm saying is the defense itself. Like if Milano goes down and you don't have a viable you know guy to stick in there, mm-hmm. you're gonna lean on too much of this defense. That's just yeah. gonna get broken. 
Yep. Um, which happened last year. So I understand that. I like the depth that you currently have. I mean, Dodson is kind of cut from that same mold of Milano. He's a smaller linebacker that can go in there. Mm-hmm. I love Sierra Neal there. I know. You um, do. I know. You I, do. I, I just love, he's just a hammer. And, and here's the thing. The Buffalo Bills have already explored a contingency plan for Milano before when they used Poyer. Yeah. Could they do it again? Yes. Is it good in the long run? No, because at the end of that year when Milano was hurt, Poyer was gassed. Yeah. But the one thing you didn't have that you do have this year is you got Hamlin and Johnson back there. You didn't have that the year when Milano went down before. So if you wanted to kind of stick Poyer in that 20 snaps a game for Milano – to kind of cover up certain things if Milano goes down, you could put Hamlin or uh, or Johnson back there, and sure. they can still do the job. I yeah. I feel they can. You know what I mean? They're not they're unproven still, but I feel I, they can do the job. Hamlin's been impressive to me. You he know, has. he has been. He's been impressive. Um. So they once again, with corners, they do such a good job with secondary guys in Buffalo. They really do. They, they do. Such a good job. It's Frazier and McDermott. I mean, if they don't, something's wrong. <laughs> I know, right? But then it tilts the scale because we talked about this before. If you don't succeed as a corner in Buffalo. Who can work with you? Yeah, it's not it's not going anywhere for you. That's no, it. It's not no, going to go anywhere for you. No. Right. Which is probably why Wallace wanted to sign for whatever last year. Because if he got wouldn't let you, go. Wouldn't you want to be on a team? Like, your value goes up the more times you return to the AFC Championship game. Right? Oh, absolutely. Like, your value just keeps going up. So absolutely. It's, you have winning culture. You make a lot more money when you're seen as having winning culture. You can bring that to an organization. I don't blame cool. you. Corey Graham extended his career like three years because he was on championship teams. That's it. Hey, listen, the money begets money, man. That's it. Hey, I picked off Manning twice. Sign me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mar, I think I think that kind of wraps up this episode, right? So, um, where if we're looking at the grand scheme of things, uh, all that being said, right? Do you think the Bills do anything in the trade deadline? Just, just. If they, they do, do it, it, it won't it won't move the needle for me. Just yeah. like you said, first of all, yeah. due to the cap situation, due to the current roster, due to current thing, you you want to keep the continuity without shaking up the boat too much. Yep. Um, I understand. Could they make moves? They could make some moves, and and it's going to be once again, as we said it many times here on the show, it's going to be like that scene in Major League where you're like Mitchell Friedman, Willie yeah. Hayes, like who right, the hell exactly. are these guys? Exactly. You know, and you see and you see all the keyboard warriors are going to go and look up their stats and say, oh well, this guy had that. Okay, all right, awesome. But the point is this: here's what here's what I want to say is I think they may make a move. I don't think it's going to be a be, move the needle. Mm-hmm. But I'm more interested at the players that the Buffalo Bills may be parting ways with. At the oh, I like that idea. I like that idea. Did you just cliffhanger this episode, Mark? Sorry, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>